Good morning, everyone. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 27. Unity and diversity in the body. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we all for we were all baptized by one spirit as so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so the body is not made of on of one part but of many. Now if the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. But I will not, it will not for the reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It will not for that reason should stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smelling be? But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one bo part, what, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body to, that seem to be weaker and dispensable, and parts that we think they are less honorable, honorable treat with special honor, and the parts that are unprincipled to treat with special modesty. When we were presentable parts, we no need special treatment, but God has put together the body, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that, so that there should be no diversity in the body, but that, part, but that its parts should be equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of the Christ, and one of you is part of it. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Okay, uh, I see some familiar cases. But I think we have been here the last two, three months, but some of you are much more familiar to us than others. So we want to thank you for inviting my husband last week, and this week is my turn to say the wife preached after the husband. But usually, as they say, the wife has the <laughs> final say. Okay, shall we come to the Lord in prayer? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have put each and every one of us in this body of Christ, which is your church. And Lord, even this morning as we look into your word, we want to thank you for each and every one of us who are seated here because we are all part of the body of Christ. And even those who belong to this church, but for one reason or another are not present this morning. They are also part of us. So we pray, Lord, that this morning as we worship together, as we read the word together, may your spirit speak into each of their hearts so that we know, Lord, this is your word for us this morning. So we thank you, Lord. We need to pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together as a body of Christ be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today I'm here and... We are at the topic I'm going to deal with the unity and the diversity in the body of Christ. Last Sunday, my dear husband, he was here, and, and it is the, this is our, our, the second part of our mini series. Okay, last week he spoke on unwrapping God's gift, and he based it on 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 to 17. And this is what he said the key verse to understanding the the spiritual gift is in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 16. And he said that is verse 7 actually, now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. So he said it is talk about one spirit, each of us, 
each and every one of us have at least one spirit and one gift. And there's only one giver, that is the Lord Jesus himself. And there's only one goal, and there's a, for the common good. And he said that he ended in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 6. He said, therefore, there are different kinds of gifts by the same spirit, different kinds of service by the same God, Lord, and there are different kinds of working, but the same God works all in all. And so he said, we're the same spirit, we are the same Lord, we are the same God, but we are all together working for the triune God. And he talked about there are six uses of spiritual gifts. Then he talked about unused, disuse, refuse, confuse, misuse, and abuse. So this morning, I entitled my sermon, Same, Same, But Different. Okay, and we are we took it from the 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 27. When we look at the book of 1 Corinthians, 2 Cor Corinthians, sorry, my mistake. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we look at the Corinthian church. The Corinthian church is a very gifted church. And it is, it is, very, it is very gifted church. It has a, it is, have lots of gifts and it talk about all the gifts. But it is a pagan church, it's a pagan background. And at the same time, there are lots of problems in the Corinthian church. For example, if you look at, look at the book of First Corinthians, the first book, you talk of their division. Okay, when Paul was there, there are some belong to Paul, some belong to Apollos, but they are war, one all of Christ. Then there are also lawsuit in the church. Then there are incest. Then there are different things. There were issues about food offered to idols because the church was situated right next to a marketplace. And so then he talked about division in the church. So today we are going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 17. Thank you so much, Kitlin, for reading the, the long Bible passage, but I read it so well. Praise the Lord for you. There are two ways of looking at passage. I think we can look at exegesis. And another way is exegesis. Exegesis, when we take a Bible passage, we look at the Bible passage, we look at the background, we look at the context, and we let the Bible speak to us, and we draw conclusion to it, exegesis. Then in the other third way, we look at a Bible passage, whatever Bible passage we're dealing with, is such an exegesis. Exegesis, actually, we look into, put our thoughts into the Bible passage, and in a sense, we make the Bible passage interpret what our stand is. So I think, as all preachers, I was chatting with Bishop recently, and we, we told each other, we will pray that all our pastors, okay, all our church pastors will preach the scripture exegesis. And this is what we are going to do this morning. We are going to look at exegesisly, and then we will look at what he had to say to us. So the passage is, the first Corinthians chapter 12, starting from verse 12. He said, just as a body, though one, one body, it has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. So Paul, Paul would take the body, because all of us have a body, each of us have a body. We know we have the head, the hand, the legs, the stomach, every outside we can see, inside we cannot see. But my whole body must consist of each and every part. And that's what Paul said. It has many parts, but all its parts form one body. So it is with Christ. Notice that Paul didn't say, so it is with the church. Paul said, all its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. He, Paul didn't say, it is with the church. But he said, it is with Christ. What does that mean? What Paul is saying, the church, the body of believers, together with Christ, who is the head, constitute the body of Christ. So we are not talking of Jesus as though remote controlling the church. But Jesus himself is the head of the church and he's part of body of a whole church together. And he is the one who is a control center because he is the head. 
Okay, next verse, First Corinthians chapter 12, 30 say, Since we are all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, so that we talk about one same spirit, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. So we talk about it is, it is the same spirit, one spirit that gives us the same, same body. So it is the same source. If any one of us here, we have accepted Jesus into our heart, the Holy Spirit make us into part of this body of Christ. It is same so it is same entrance. There's no back door entrance. The only way to become part of the member of the body of Christ is when we put our trust, put our faith in the Lord Jesus. And it is the same entity. Once we are part of a body, we are the same, even though we are different, but we are all the same because we are all the same body. And how? Because we were all, each and every one of us, from the oldest to the youngest, we were all baptized together. So we have the same spirit, we have the same body, and we have the same entrance. The next verse, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Isn't it true? Paul said our body is have different parts of body, okay, have many parts. It is like if you look at human body personally, we have hands, we have legs, we have eyes, we have ear, we have inside, the stomach, the lungs, the intestine and so on or look at let's if you look at the body of christ together there's a uh, representation of a church body not everyone looks the same they are different colors uh, they are different slightly different shape so we are many but we are all still one okay verse 15 onwards it talk about now if the food should say because i'm not a hand I do not belong to the body. Okay. Or it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. Or if the year should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It is not for that reason stop being part of the body. Isn't that obvious? Okay. But what is that reason that you talk about? What is the reason that makes whether the hand say they are, the foot say not the hand, the ears are not an eye. And the reason is when we have a feeling of insignificance in the body of Christ. Either feeling of insignificance or an inferiority complex. Either something that we of our own possess it, or sometimes sad to say it could be impressed upon us or forced upon us by others in the body of Christ. So when we share it is, we must not have the feeling of insignificant and this is one of the two common problems on extreme aid facing any church let's go down verses 16 b to 17 he said if the whole body were an eye where would the sense of hearing be can you imagine somebody come in the it's round round whole body like eye so there was a story about one youth pastor he came to a youth meeting and we are holding a big ball, a, a big thing. It's the whole thing was an eye. Then he said, this is my baby. I'm going to show you my baby today. And all the young people look at that object that he brought. Big eye, huge eye, just glaring and all of that. And they got the message. What if our body is like that? Everybody is just ah, eye. Or you say, if the whole body were a year, where would the sense of smell be? Okay, it talks about in the body, different of different function. Someone may be an eye. We, have, we can see things. We can interpret things. Okay, but some of us are better at hearing. Listener, right? In our body, you know, if I have some issue, I know who to go to. Because in my group of people, I know some people have a good listening ear. They listen what I say, they help me. But some people have eyes, have good vision. Go down, verse 18. He said, but in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them. It is God who decides where you live. If you are living in, let's say, Sikinchang, 
not likely are going to come to Living Hope Methodist Church, right? Because it's too far. God is God who decides where you live. This morning, we met Brother Richard, right? Brother Richard, he said he was staying in Klein, but then for some sequences, he was moved to around here, and then he sensed the Lord calling him, leave Klein Wesley and be part of Living Hope Methodist Church. I think where you live and with whom, you have no choice whom you live with. Your mother-in-law, your daughter-in-law, your father-in-law, your brothers, God has placed you there. And where you work, okay, our colleague, our influence, area influence, okay, with home, and also which church you attend. Okay, I think it is not for coincidence that any one of you is here in Living Hope Methodist Church. I think God has a purpose for each and every one of you here in this body of believers, Living Hope Methodist Church. And each of us have to discern and ask the Lord, which part of the body, Living Hope Methodist Church, you want me to be in, to be, and you want me to serve. Okay, and remember where you live, where you work, the fact that you are in here, and what ministry you do, what service you serve in the church is God's decision. It is God's choice. I think yesterday, Pastor Swimmy talked about primary ministry and secondary ministry, but I think we need to ask the Lord. Okay, I do say sometimes my gifting may be something. Okay, maybe I'm very good as a children worker. I've been children pastor for 20 over years. Children, but if I go to a church that already have a thriving Sunday school, the Lord may want me to deal with another ministry and I have to obey. Okay, so the, the, let's go now verse 19. Ha, this is Paul say, if they were all one part, where would the body be? And if they were, as it is, there were many parts. Okay, there are many parts, but they all together make up one body. Isn't that very simple to understand? I think even the child can understand. Okay, what's the little girl's name? Okay, you know that you have hands, you have legs, you have hair, your eyes, but all together make you. Okay, right. Okay, let's go down to the next verse. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. And this is an independent spirit or a superiority complex. This is the other extreme of one of the common problems in any church. Some of us think that I'm the best here. I'm so needed and I don't need the rest. Okay, that is the independent spirit. And if any church, we have either of these two problems, independent spirit or superiority complex, inferiority complex, or independent spirit or superior contact. When these two are present and not dealt with in any body of Christ, will eventually need to lead to the stagnation and possibly even the death and the organization. So these are two we need to look out for in the body. And I want to talk about the three no the three no C principle. Okay, no comparison. Okay, we can't compare. I'm better than you in this, and you are not as good as me in this. Okay, no competition. Okay, and no condemnation. So in any church, in the body, when we work together, always remember, whichever ministry we may be doing, whichever service we may be doing, me but work in unity, same, same, even though we do different things. And we, there should not be comparison between one another, and we must not copy. I want to be better than you. If I'm a Sunday school teacher, I want to be better than you. So that all the students will say, I'm the better Sunday school teacher. That is the competitive spirit or condemnation. Oh, yeah, you know good. Lah. Why today your your the chart you draw uh, the color not very nice so you condemn one another so no comparison no competition no condemnation the next verse okay on the contrary those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable 
there was one time a preacher was preaching and at the end of his sermon, a doctor came up to him. And the doctor said, you know, pastor, there's one part of your body that is absolutely essential to you as a preacher. So he said, what? And the doctor said, you may not realize, but it is really essential. So he said, is it my brain? Okay, because if I don't think, I don't study, I can't prepare a sermon. Or is it my tongue? I can't speak. He said, no. And the preacher said, it is your big toe. He said, because the big toe, when you stand up, if your body tends to lean forward, your big toe sends it. Lean sideways, the big toe sends it. So he said, wherever it is, if you do not have a big toe, you are not able to stand up and preach. So the pastor realized the part that really, even though it's small, we will never think of the big toe. Actually quite small compared to the rest of my body, like the big toe. But that is the, one of the most essential part. If you don't have a big toe, uh, please don't ask a pastor to chop off his big toe and see whether <laughs> he can stand up and preach. Okay, all if you imagine, I, look, I saw this picture when I was looking for pictures, and he said, can you imagine if your whole body, your whole foot was a big toe? Okay, it is just like I said, if your whole body was an eye, can you imagine if your whole body a big toe, if awful, right? That's why we need to have different parts of the body and need to have different things. Okay, 23, the teddy paw. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. Most Bible scholars say probably are private part. And because they have a private part, we actually treat it. We make sure we don't expose our private part. We cover with special modesty. You see, whereas the presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, given greater honor to the parts that lack it. When I look at this first, I thought of someone in the body of Christ, somebody who is on a wheelchair, somebody who is on clutches. We need to give them special attention somebody who needs special, that the rest of us do not need as much attention. So that there should be no division in the body, but that its part should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Let's take note. It didn't say when one part suffers, all should suffer with it. Okay, the scripture didn't say that. We talk about exegesis. When the scripture didn't say, Paul didn't say, when, when one part suffer, all should suffer. Okay, or not all should suffer, or not all should be honored. But he said, but he said, one part, every part just suffer. But actually, it's something that actually happens. It is it's a definitive reality. For example, if your hand get caught in closing the door, slam the door, got your finger get caught in, what will happen? Immediately, they will send a message to the brain. The brain will tell your feet, jump around because you want to move off. And then you probably send a message to the eye, and then you start crying. Then you send a message to the mouth, you scream. And then you probably send a message to the other hand, try to grab the door to open because you have, you have it. This is something in our body, defense mechanism. When something happens, it happens, it will all respond. Similarly, in the body of Christ, when one part suffer, because we are part of the same body of Christ, we will suffer. And then it is not whether we should, we will. And then he said, in the tradition, if one part suffer, every part suffers with it, one part is honored, Every part honor with it. I rejoices with it. I will have a very personal testimony to share here. I think in the year end of December 2021, both of us retired December, December 31st, 2021. But I was in hospital December 28th. 29 was our wedding anniversary. But 20, I have a major surgery, gut surgery. Because just about a, well, a week or so before that, I through a colonoscopy and so I found out that I actually have a carcinoma inside too. They may have a cancer that just started, but thankfully it hasn't spread. 
So it is contained within my my uh, rect within my sigmoid colon. Okay, and so the decision was obviously the surgeon asked me, "You want to wait six months for a repeat colonoscopy? What would be your decision if you are faced in the situation?" Of course, needless to say, I told the surgeon, no, I don't want to wait six months. I don't want to wait six months and then after they come back, see you, colonoscopy, and say, hey, spread to the other part. So immediately, without much delay, immediately within one week, we decided to schedule and we went for the surgery. That was 28-29. The surgery was successful. I have a very good friend who is a good surgeon, but it was my body. Somehow my body reacted. Okay, have a complication. There was a stricture. On the second day, my surgeon came and see me. He sent something was so because I would keep having diarrhea, diarrhea. So we went home. But the surgery, the thing was uh, removed. The whole, the whole sigmoid collar were removed. I don't need any, any further treatment. I don't need any chemo. But because of my colon have a stricture, until today, my bowel movement is not normal yet. Okay, sometimes you find that I run to the toilet three, four times, but I always make sure God is good. A week after I came back, I had to preach uh, on Zoom for Pastor Choi Queen's Church in Nusa Jaya. And during the one and a half hour service time, God allowed me to sit on my computer and no need to go to the uh, toilet at all. And so it is, God has been me. But I want to share this because during that period, when I was in hospital, and there was there was actually MCO, still MCO time, COVID time, and when I came home, the the I can sense the whole church suffering with me, the amount of love they care they give to me, they come and visit me, and and my staff when they come and visit everyone who come to visit me, they make sure that they do the COVID test in the morning. Make sure they are negative, COVID negative, before they come near me at all. And then in my house, the kitchen counter, my brand essence of chicken, my <laughs> the what the bird nest fill up my whole counter. And I want to give it's a, it's really I experienced firsthand the care and the love. And when I suffer, my body of Christ suffer with me. And I want to give thanks to God. Okay, I just I will con pray, continue to pray for me that generally I look okay. I regain my strength. I regain my appetite. I put on some weight. After surgery, I lost 10 kilo, was skin and bone. But it's just my bowel movement that has yet to regain full function. Appreciate your prayer for me. So the last verse that we have, now you, Living Hope Methodist Church, you are the body of Christ that God has placed in Bukit Rimau here. And each of you, everyone here, is a part of it. And as we say, we are going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, my apology. Okay, we look at exegesisly, and then we're going to see what does this space, what does this passage on the body of Christ spoke to us. Uh, today, because us means the whole church as a body of Christ. This picture was taken in 2nd of August, 2015. That's where the, the whole, the Living Hope Methodist Church was constituted as a local church. Maybe how many of you were in that photograph? Could I have a raise of hand? How many of you were there? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five of you. Some of you joined later. And we started with 37 charter member okay and um, let's go and then let's look at the next picture but it was constituted in 2nd august 2015 but the history goes way before that the starting of the church uh, actually the vision of the our current bishop at that time he was track president Jayakumar, around 2007 he had the vision but even before that, I was told our pray, prayerful bishop at the time, church priest, prayed for six, six years for each and every one of you before you came into being. And it was in the 2013, August 29th, 
he gathered an initial group of 14 believers and they make a pact every Thursday at 10 p.m. They will pray for the starting of a church in this place as a community, as a witness to this community. Then on February the 8th, 2014, there was the inauguration service of the Living Hope Methodist preaching, the time preaching point. Because in a Methodist discipline, you must have at least 35 registered members in your membership role before you can be called a Methodist local conference. Otherwise, they are preaching point. So on February the 8th, 2014, it was a preaching point. And of course, Pastor Theo Liying was then the pastor. And I, I understood that uh, Emmanuel Methodist Church, or your foster mother, right? <laughs> foster mother church. And then on the 39th, on that end of that year, 39th session of the track conference, okay, the track conference approved the constitution as a local church in 2015. And so we come back to this picture, 2nd August 2015, it was constituted as a Methodist church, as a local conference with 37 charter members. And this is, you see, uh, growing in Christ, our living hope and touching lives bringing hope so this is the vision mission statement and when we have a vision state vision mission statement of a local church means something every one of us in the local church will have to move along with this aim this vision this mission and this is one of the picture i pick up it was in 2018 so about three years three to four years after you started that you have a Big, I think two nights, 15 and 16 of December, you're caroling in the Gamuda Walk. And when I look at this group, I think these are all your carolers, right? Who went? I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have occurred to me, this group of people come from a small, quite a small size congregation in Bukit Rumah. It looks like it come from a big church, okay? And this picture was last year, where the dedication of this new premise. So, so far you have Pastor Theo Liang. Then of course you have Reverend Gauri as a pastor after that. And then you have Pastor, uh, pastor Sam, Sammy, right? Chris, uh, Chris. And then of course now you have uh, Pastor Eric. <laughs> so I was asking the Lord, after we look at that, what is the message you have for us as Living Hope Methodist Church? And I think, see. I want to bring up their three C that I want to leave with you. First C, second C, and third C. First C is Christ. The second C is a three C principles. And the third C is connectedness. First C, Christ. We are a body. Living Hope Methodist Church. We are a body of Christ. We, Christ as the head. Not remote control, but part of us. And Christ is the head of the church, head of the body of Christ. So we recognize the boss, the spiritual boss of this church is not your pastor, is not your LCC chairman, is not your financial, but Jesus is the head. He is the command center and he is the ultimate decision maker. He is the controller. Okay, he decides where to put each person in the position that he wants you to be. But the Lord Jesus doesn't just give us a task. You do this, you do that. But even as he commissioned each of us to do something, he empowers us. He empowers us by his abiding presence, but he also empowers us by his Holy Spirit. So we can take comfort that even as he calls to do something, he will enable us to do something. The second C is a 3C principle. No, I mentioned no comparison, no competition, no condemnation. It talks about within the local church. But I think you also talk about within uh, with other churches. Sometimes you can say, oh, you, we are such a small church. If we compare to DUMC, la, big congregation, la, we are so small. Oh, you, we are not much use. Or even uh, compared to the other churches, EMC, we are so small. But don't compare. Because you are you. Each church has our own identity. Each church 
have our own calling. What God calls VUMC or SSMC to do is not something which God calls you to do. Okay, the third C is connectedness. Who can name me? What is the name of this tree? Okay, this is, this is called the redwood tree or the sequoia tree. It is the biggest tree. It is the tallest and the oldest tree. Okay, it's tower so high. The biggest tree I check out is the General Sherman tree, which is in the Sequoia National Park in California. Okay, it is 31 meter in circumference. 31 meter means 30 over feet. Huh? 30 over yard, because one meter is slightly more uh, about one yard. So in the side, you probably have how 10, 15 people to surround it. Then it is 83 meter tall. 83 meter with how many? Well, probably 10, 20 story tall. Or oh, it's really tall tree. At the same time, this tree, they weigh roughly is a 6,000 ton. And pictures that show there, the tree is so huge, you can actually, you can actually drill a hole in the middle of the tree and a car can pass through. Okay, it is also one of the oldest tree in the planet. They live as long as, as old as 8,000 to 1,500 years. Okay, 1,500 1, years. Okay, but one thing about this tree, their roots are not very deep. They actually have quite shallow roots. And such a tall tree, but shallow root, why it doesn't topple over? The reason being, it has, they maintain their stability by intertwining the roots of other redwood trees. Okay, and that speaks to us as a church. Each of us on our own may not be that deep, but when we are together as the body of Christ, intertwining together, working together, serving together, we will be strong. We will be like the forest, tall and yet so strong. So I want to aim with this, you, you are unique. You are Living Hope Methodist Church. You are not UMC. You are not SSMC. You are not EMC. You are that, but you are LHMC, Living Hope Methodist Church. You are unique. I've been here just a few times, but I can even, though I've been here two, three times, I can recognize some of your gifting. For example, your strength. For example, I can see the body life. I can see the way you treat one another. I can see how you relate to one another. And what I, want, I would like to see, show you this video. And, uh, Do you know what impresses me most about this video clip is? When we go for a caroling, usually about 10, 15, 20 people, we have one guitarist, right? The most two guitarists, and we sing that we wish in America. But this is the first time I saw a small church take a caroling with the whole band there. You have drummer, I roughly counted probably eight or 10 guitarists. I've never seen another group, and you are unique. You are really unique, okay? So, and besides you need you, the challenge, I think the Lord wants to give all of us today, you have to be connected. I think you have connect group. You have, do you call DG care group? Connect group? DG. CG. Whatever it is, small group. I think coming to a church, one of the first things you need to be doing is be connected to a small group where the life of the church is actually there. Be connected, then be united. 
same, even though you are different. Different gifting, different function, different thing, but you are same, same. You need to be united and you need to keep your unity and you need to be focused. Okay, we were just saw the clip. Yeah, the, the, this is, a, we, we wanted, you needed a rich raise fund. So it is a, be focused on what you are doing and I think the Lord will bless you. Okay. And then we, 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 are, we recognize we are unique. We, when we are connected, when we are united, focused, then we have to move. We can move together as a church together. Okay. Shall we pray? Lord, we want to thank you for each and every one of us. Whether we are different parts of the body of Christ, but we are the same same, same body of Christ that you, by your own divine orchestration, have placed each and every one of us in this locality, in this local church, Living Hope Methodist Church. And I want to ask, Lord, for your blessings upon this community of faith, that even as they serve together, even as they intertwine, even as they connect with one another together, Lord, you pour forth your blessings on them. You know their heart. You also know their struggle. And Lord, we just pray that you will bring them together as a body of Christ. And together, moving in the same direction, being united, being connected, being focused, as a body of Christ, they will move forward together. We want to thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say, Amen. Amen.